radar sets with which you are already familiar will detect and locate aircraft, but will not in themselves tell whether this aircraft is friend or enemy. Equipment has been developed, therefore, to enable a friendly plane to identify itself, and so avoid being shot down. This equipment is known as IFF, which means identification, friend or foe. One type of IFF equipment is the Mark II or M2. With this system, no additional ground equipment is needed. For example, with radio set SCR-270, the operator tracks a target in the usual manner and sees this normal oscilloscope picture. The main pulse is at the left and the target echo at the right of the hairline. It is evident, of course, that this picture gives no indication whether the craft is friend or enemy. A friendly plane identifies itself by means of Mark II airborne equipment, known as a transponder. The transmitted pulse from the radar set automatically triggers the transponder, which sends back reply pulses at six-second intervals. These reply pulses are picked up by the radar set's receiving antenna and fed to the receiver. They appear on the oscilloscope screen as a reinforcing signal at approximately the same range as the target echo, as you see here. The IFF pulses reinforce the normal radar echo, since they are actually transmitted from the plane, not merely reflected by it. If this reinforced signal does not appear, then the plane is an enemy craft. The IFF reply in these pictures is strong enough to send the radar echo to saturation, as indicated by the horizontal line of light, which appears momentarily at the top of the screen every six seconds, and the simultaneous break in the baseline. Although the reply may not always be this strong for distant targets, it will almost always be stronger than the radar echo. For this reason, even though the radar echo is too faint to appear on the oscilloscope, you may still pick up IFF responses. The Mark II system of IFF has this operating disadvantage. It will answer only to those radar sets with transmitting frequencies in the vicinity of those for radio sets SCR-268 and 270. To permit the application of IFF equipment to all radar sets, regardless of their frequencies, the Mark III system was designed with a frequency band of its own. This system makes use of both ground and airborne equipment. Take, for example, this installation for an SCR-270 set. A very short signal or pulse of ultra-high frequency radio energy is sent out from the IFF transmitter or interrogator through the IFF antenna and into the transponder in the friendly plane. This transponder automatically transmits a reply pulse, which is picked up by the same IFF antenna and fed to the IFF receiver or a responser. Both the main and echo pulses for the radar set and the challenge and reply pulse for the IFF may be seen on the oscilloscope screen, but on separate baselines. This is made possible through the use of an additional piece of equipment, an interconnecting unit or simply a control unit. A monitoring oscilloscope is provided for making a positive operational check of the ground IFF equipment. Let's see how this equipment is used. Here an operator adjusts the sensitivity control of the familiar long-range oscilloscope as he searches for a target. This is the picture he sees. Main pulse at the left, target echo at the right of the hairline. So far, the IFF is not in operation. Flipping this challenge switch to the operate position turns on the ground IFF. Now the operator sees two baselines with the radar signals up. IFF signals down. Note that the IFF reply pulses, which appear below the target echo every two and a half seconds, do not all have the same width. Some are much wider than others. By a suitable combination of these wide and narrow pulses, a coded reply message is automatically sent by the friendly aircraft. Four successive reply pulses make up the complete message. In this case, two narrow pulses, followed by two wide pulses. And it takes 10 seconds for these four pulses to be seen. Narrow, narrow, Wide, wide. Next, the operator turns the phase control knob to line up the challenge pulse with the main pulse. This is important. These two pulses should be lined up so that their leading edges form a straight line. When this has been done, the pulses are said to be in phase. 
If the two pulses are not in phase, then the data passed on to the information center will not be accurate. It is really preferable, when an IFF reply is available, to line up a reply pulse with its corresponding radar echo. Phasing completed, the operator turns the gain knob on the control unit. When the gain is properly adjusted, the grass or noise on the IFF baseline should be about one half inch deep, as you see here. After the plane has been identified, the IFF is turned off by flipping the challenge switch back to the standby position. Now let's watch a complete operating sequence. The operator flips on the challenge switch. Then he adjusts the phase control and lines up the pulses. Next, he adjusts for proper gain. This completed, he closes the door. No further adjustments will have to be made on the IFF. The operator continues to watch the oscilloscope screen until he has identified the plane by its coded reply message. Then he flips the challenge switch back to the standby position and resumes normal radar tracking. This is the radar echo from an enemy plane. Let's see what happens when he's challenged. Since no reply is received at the end of 10 seconds, the aircraft is enemy. By contrast, when a friendly plane is challenged, a coded reply is received. Incidentally, this coded message is varied from time to time as an extra precaution against the enemy copying our identification signals and posing as friendly. The more complex indication shown on the upper baseline is probably familiar to some of you as representative of displays seen in many field installations. The multiplicity of fixed radar echoes at positions indicating relatively close proximity to the station is normal under such conditions. You will note that a very wide IFF signal appears momentarily in this case as a horizontal white line below the right center portion of the IFF baseline every two and a half seconds. This is a distress signal as it appears on the Mark III system. It is automatically transmitted by the transponder in the friendly plane when the emergency switch is thrown on. This, then, is the Mark III system of IFF, an improved type of identification equipment applicable to all radar sets. Its use enables a friendly plane to identify itself to the searching station. Mm -hmm.